the victims of the Belarus border crisis were obvious. For Poland's government, it was a useful distraction the Nationalist Law and Justice Party, which won an outright majority in 2015, has seen its grip on parliamentary power weaken in the years since. It is also roiled in conflict with the European Commission over the rule of law and faces wide opposition, especially in urban areas, to its position on cultural issues. Earlier this month, the death of a pregnant Polish woman reignited debate over the country's near-total ban on abortion, with protesters again taking to the streets, the right-wing party's ruling coalition narrowly controlled the lower house, the same, until the summer, when three MPs defected, costing peace its formal majority and forcing it to rely on the support of independents. The party had already lost control of Poland's upper house in 2019 elections, and President Andrzej Duda, backed by peace, only narrowly won a second term last year. Meanwhile, rising inflation is causing financial pain for many in Poland, and polling indicates support for the government has dropped in recent weeks, said Boris. I don't want to play down the situation because it is risky and serious, quite a difficult political situation because it involves a security conflict and a humanitarian crisis, but there is of course also an attempt to capitalize politically on this crisis," he said. Judy Dempsey, editor of the Strategic Europe blog for the think tank Carnegie Europe, agreed that the crisis had been playing out very well for the ruling party. Support for the government had fallen, she said, amid protests over the death of the pregnant woman. But Dempsey added, with this whole crisis on the Belarusian-Polish border, law and justice now is seen as a champion of protecting Polish sovereignty and, of course, protecting Europe. State of emergency Meanwhile, opposition politicians are in a difficult position because they cannot say they don't want to protect the border, Ura said, although they have criticized some of the measures taken by the government. Warsaw has tried to keep the crisis from view blocking the Polish side of the border to journalists, aid workers, and doctors amid an extended state of emergency. That has not always worked to the Polish government's benefit, some of the most compelling images of the crisis, such as Polish border forces using water cannons on desperate migrants, were captured from the Belarusian side of the border, where international journalists were able to operate. The government is now trying to pass legislation that would give it new powers when the state of emergency expires next month. The crisis has also forced the EU to rally behind for Poland at a time of increasingly bitter dispute between the European Commission and Poland over the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary. Late last month, the European Union's top court ordered Poland to pay a daily fine of 1 million euros for failing to suspend a disciplinary chamber for judges that the bloc says breaches EU law, just the latest in a series of conflicts. Now, the European Commission and key European powers are speaking out in support of Poland as the defender of the bloc's eastern border. In a call Wednesday with Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said Germany stands in full solidarity with Poland over the border crisis, German government spokesman Stefan Seibert tweeted. Members of PiS have openly expressed their hope that the European Commission will show more understanding for Poland and would apply a lighter approach to the rule of law issues because of this crisis on the border Boris said. Nonetheless, the political situation is very volatile he added and the Polish government risks finding itself hemmed in by its fierce rhetoric on border security and unable to back down. If the crisis abates, with migrants repatriated or no longer on the border, the extent to which the Polish government continues to benefit from the nationalistic fervor it has whipped up will depend in part on how effective the opposition is, Dempsey said. Another factor to consider is those within Poland who do not share the government's desire to keep the migrants out, she said. We mustn't forget that there are civil society movements and non governmental organizations and decent people who want these migrants treated properly, access to the border to give them help, she said. Maybe this will backfire. The Polish government kept a lid on the reporting and didn't allow humanitarian agencies or the media to go to the border. 
so as this crisis does weaken, no doubt law and justice will try to keep the nationalist fervor going, but it cannot be sustained. EU backs Poland on borders The clear losers in this crisis are the migrants, mostly from the Middle East, who paid large sums to traffickers on the false promise of an easy way to cross illegally into Poland and travel on deeper into Europe in search of a better life. An unlucky few have died of cold in the freezing forests along Belarus border. Others have opted to return home having gained nothing except debt. An Iraqi Airways evacuation flight left Thursday from Minsk carrying more than 400 Iraqis back to the cities of Erbil and Baghdad. Belarusian border guards moved some migrants to shelter in a warehouse after tensions on the border flared into skirmishes Tuesday. The remainder followed on Thursday, leaving behind only remnants of the makeshift camp by the Bruski Kuznica crossing where 2,000 or more people had been camped out. Lukashenko's spokeswoman, Natalia Oismont, said Thursday that about 7,000 migrants were in Belarus. Those who remain insist on a humanitarian corridor being opened to Western Europe, primarily to Germany, Eismont said, according to Belarus state news agency Bell T8. According to the Polish border guard, there have been more than 35,000 attempts to cross illegally into Poland from Belarus since the beginning of August. Seven people had been found dead on the Polish side of the border as of Thursday. Poland has been criticized by international aid organizations who say it is breaching international law by pushing asylum seekers who make it over the border back into Belarus, instead of accepting their applications for international protection. Poland stands by its actions, however, saying they are legal. Meanwhile, some who have made it over the border into Poland have alleged brutal treatment at the hands of Belarusian security forces. Western officials have accused Belarusian strongman leader Alexander Lukashenko of manufacturing the crisis to destabilize the bloc as retribution for sanctions over human rights abuses. The unanswered question is what Belarus now stands to gain from the standoff on the EU's eastern frontier. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.